prospering. Located 60 kilometers west of Hong Kong, it consists of the Macau Peninsula and the small islands of Taipa and Kowloon. All are connected by bridge or causeways. This city is a fascinating blend of east meets west. Macau has achieved this union to a T, a perfect marriage of old world Portuguese charm and traditional Chinese elegance, a union which has helped it surge ahead. Macau has its own special brand of magic, and you can feel the electricity in the air. There's no better place to experience it than here in the International Dragon Boat Festival. It happens every July, and if you want to soak up the festivities and be aroused by the Macau spirit, then this is the place to be. I'm Greta Georges. Welcome to Travel Log. <laughs> It's Dragon Boat season. This festival began as a commemoration of a heroic poet, Qi Yuan, who protested against corruption by drowning himself. And today's celebration race takes place at Nam Ban Lake. Here, you'll find no lack of activities drawing locals and tourists alike to participate or just to marvel at the spectacle. Hong Kong, okay. I had an idea what it was like. Okay. Yes. No, it's great to see it. To see it happening. Yeah. I live in Zhuhai. I live in Zhuhai. I lived in China for four years, but I never seen the dragon boat racing. You never seen the dragon boat racing? No. I always wanted to see it, but I always thought there'd be too many people. It'd be too crowded. It'd be too much trouble. So we met. Here in Macau on Tuesday night, they came from Australia. Uh -huh. So we were just here. It just happened that the dragon boats were, ha were on. So it was a good opportunity to come and see them. Fantastic. Are you enjoying it so far? Yeah. Very interesting. All right. Oh, what do we have here? A really cute little girl. Hello. Hello, Hello. Who is the captain? Okay. Were you supporting your team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how were you supporting your team? So in my heart, yeah. In your heart, yeah. in spirit, while he was texting. Mm. <laughs> it's all right, man, guys. I think you did well. I, I wish you all the best of luck. High five. Thank Hang on a second. Are you are you sure they're the bestest? They're the fastest. No. Are you, how do you know this? Are you are you the team leader? Yes, yes. The only problem is we have other boats against us. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be doing okay. Otherwise, you'd be number one. We'd be number one. Right. Yeah. Are you guys? Macau, or are you guys from different parts of the world? Uh, different parts of the world, but uh, I see you we're Macanese at heart, so. <laughs> the luxury hotel industry is big business in Macau. It's an ever-growing industry demanding an ever-growing team. To cater to the work-life balance of the staff, it's not uncommon to see the representatives of their hotels on race day. I'm at the main bus station, which is next to the Macau Hong Kong Ferry Terminal. Now, this is where you need to be if you want to take a tour around the city. And this signboard is actually really handy. There's a description in English of all the different main attractions. And look, there's even a full-color photograph. It only costs a $3 or 320 for tacos to get on the bus. It's really cheap and a good way to get around the city. <laughs> How old are you this year? 14 years old. What's your name? Macau's own currency is the pataka, just slightly less than the Hong Kong dollar. Here's a tip. The public transportation runs smoothly from 7 a.m. to midnight, and there are special bus services serving the airport. These buses zip across the city and stop at major hotels. It's an easy way to get around and a big money saver. Macau is pretty compact, but you'll definitely need some form of transportation when visiting Taipa and Kolowan. Oh, bye bye. That was so refreshing to be on the bus with all the kids. I mean, even on a rainy day, I'll, I definitely recommend to just jump off because you get to see the different neighborhoods and suburbs. Many gleaming hotels vie for attention, promising a feast for the senses. This ever-growing hotel industry calls for creative innovation to stay ahead of competition. Take this for example. A distinguishing feature of the resort is the lobby, which is located on the ground level. 
The glass ceiling is 25 meters above ground, and this dynamic space showcases European-inspired architecture. I've come to have lunch at a Michelin-starred Chinese restaurant in MGM Macau, and I've heard they've got legendary Cantonese cuisine. But I can't help but notice that the decoration here is simply marvelous. So I'm going to see if they've got more surprises down that way. This hotel commissioned special glass sculptures for its lobby. Flori di Paradiso ceiling is an elaborate exotic flower glass sculpture made by world-renowned American artist Dale Chihuly. He churned both of these glass pieces especially for the hotel, including the one behind the reception. At what cost? Well, it set MGM back a cool two million U.S. dollars. It just shows pockets are deep here. And the hotels are willing to pay the price to impress and be better than the rest. This hostess with the mostest luxury hotel is also a fine example of just how serious Macau's hotels are about spoiling guests. It took over 1.25 billion dollars to build and is manned by 6,000 staff. It feels more like a trot to an art gallery, not a hotel lobby. No expense has been spared to simulate this incredible lighting effect. Chihuly himself was involved. The Chihuly Gallery in MGM Macau was the first store to open in Asia. Enough for the eyes. It's time for the taste buds. Took a really long time to savor these art pieces, and looks like everyone's left now because it's way past lunchtime. Mm, I guess the upside is I've got my very own privacy. Mm -hmm. And on the menu today, we've got soup served in papaya from Hawaii, foie gras with pork belly skewers and scallops, with black truffles, crab claw on top of egg white, and this is all fusion cuisine, especially tailored by a world-renowned chef. This restaurant even won a one-star Michelin in 2009. Well, I'm just going to have to put it to the test. Mmm. It's easy. Mmm. To just savor the flavor. I decided to investigate the sweets after my belly is full. I've been given access to this exclusive villa for your viewing pleasure. Now, this place obviously comes with a hefty price tag, but it's extraordinary, and you might want to indulge yourselves when you're in Macau. But um, how much do you think a night stay would cost? Well, I'm going to give you some clues. Let's have a look at the bedroom. Actually, this caught my eye. Can you believe it? This bathroom is ginormous. You can put a table in here and have a dinner party, or maybe even play table tennis. Anything else that's unique? You're very old, old glass screen TV. TV. And I don't feel like my library. library. And there's the kitchen. And if you call for room service, they can deliver your food through the back door, so you won't be disturbed. Now, what's the price tag for all this exclusivity? They'll set you back about forty thousand patakas. Did you get it right? Because that's a splurge. That's equivalent to five thousand U.S. dollars. Next. Let's check out another exclusive boutique hotel with a tongue-in-cheek motif. Now there are loads of five-star hotels all along the Macau Peninsula. Whether you're looking for top-notch room service or facilities, you'll be spoiled for choice. Now each and every one of the hotels are putting their best face and foot forward because of the fierce competition. Take this for example. It's the Encore at Win Macau, and it took over half a billion U.S. dollars to build. It's an all-sweet boutique hotel that promises to serve up only the best. The vintage chandeliers don't come cheap, but they're simply more bling. These jellyfishes are part of the cheeky design this hotel is known for. 
a way to get a load of the tree of prosperity. Now we are standing in anticipation of the tree of prosperity show. It's gonna, I think, spring up from underneath, and there's gonna be some spectacular, shining moments. This shows you how far hotels are going to attract people to come and stay with them. To be on top of the game, when Macau created this entertainment showpiece, merging visual displays and sounds. These 2,000 branches and 98,000 leaves are made of 24 karat gold. It's the very symbol of auspiciousness. It's an all-round 360-degree multimedia experience. People are just throwing coins, and I think they just want to probably lay their staked claim and perhaps prosper like the tree. Okay, so the lobby was spectacular, but what about the rooms? Curtains up. And you have a spectacular view of the sea. But such luxury has almost become a norm here. The well-heeled expect no less. These shimmering hotels scramble to get the best spot, and for this one in particular, its prize is the unparalleled view of the island of Taipa. La Dolce Vita, or the good life, almost always seemed to include good wine. And since the Portuguese also left a legacy of red wine, it's worth getting educated at the museum. All right. So, what do you have in store for me today? Okay. So we have uh, five different Portuguese wine: La Grima White Port wine, mm -hmm. Tony Port, Muscatel wine. Oh, nice. Okay. This museum will teach you loads about wine production, from preserving, aging, transportation to storing. Now you cannot claim to be a true connoisseur without first understanding how this glass of vino came to be. So I'm going to have to look around. The aim of this museum is not only to dish out information on wine and vineyards, but also to recreate the atmosphere during the production of wine. The best part of the tour is that you get to sample the wine. Now, if you are really pressed for time, there are two museums that I highly recommend you check out. The first is Museum de Vino, which showcases wine from Portugal as they've left a great legacy here in Macau. And the second is the Grand Prix Museum because it's an international race and it's the longest-standing history, 56 years. Now, these two museums lie side by side each other, so you can just traverse cross. You know what they say about drinking and driving, but in this case, it's not applicable. Hi. Hello. How much are tickets? It's free, man. It's free of charge. Sure. Fantastic. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Now let's head over to the Grand Prix Museum to find out how it all started in Macau in 1954. You can check out pictures of Macau's proudest moments in history. It's a treasure trove of photos, memorabilia, trophies, and literature related to this fast and furious city circuit. Boys, get ready for a life in the fast lane. Now this is the stuff that dreams are made of. You see the cars whizzing down the street at more than 200 kilometers per hour. And in this museum, you can get up close and personal with the action. Now this car is going through the pit stop stage, so it's really critical for them to succeed in the race. You can take part in the Macau WTCC Championships by coming every November and seeing it in all its glory and action. The museum opened in 1993 to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Macau Grand Prix, 
an event which has earned a respected position among international championships. I'm driving on an actual F3 simulator race. Now this is running on the Macau track. And you'll see this every November. Now it's been the longest running race for 56 years because it wasn't affected by World War II. And of course, I can't do it like the pro because I don't actually have a driver's license, but I can fulfill my race car driving dreams. Watch out, boys. Although its Grand Prix is fast and furious, drivers on the streets of Macau have impeccable manners and almost always give way. You can think of renting a car for sightseeing when you're traveling in a group. Driving is on the left-hand side. We continue our journey further south, and after checking out the hotels on the peninsula, we decided to head across the bridge to size up the competition. After all, Macau stops at nothing to flex its muscles and seduce crowds with even bigger and flashier sports. When you come to Altura Hotel, you'll be whisked up to the 38th floor as this is where the lobby is at. Now check this out. You'll be greeted with a panoramic view of the city and this is the best spot to capture Macau's sexy skyline. Now even if you're not staying here, you can still come up to this lounge which is next to the lobby and savour it all. But what else is important to the visitor besides the glorious view? Does size matter? Sitting on reclaimed land, the Venetian Macau has taken the entire industry by storm. It's a 3,000 suite giant, large enough to hold 90 Boeing 747 jumbo jets. With a stellar combo of facilities, attractions and amenities, it has boosted the city's rise as one of Asia's most exciting entertainment, convention and exhibition destinations. The decor of the Venetian Macau has obviously ripped a page off Venice's architectural design. Here you'll find classical Italian paintings fill every square inch of the ceilings. I find it a little guardian over the top, but hey, if you've got it, then flaunt it. That seems to be like the philosophy the Venetian Macau has. And the exhibition center is a good example of that. You can find spaces like this across the board in most luxury resort hotels. But things don't come bigger than this. All you event planners, look here for conferences, meetings, that social extravaganza, or that unforgettable wedding. This hotel is fully equipped with 108 flexible meeting rooms and a whole host of convention facilities. This elegant setting is built to impress, especially those working in the meetings, incentives, conferences, and events industry. There might be a lack of land in Macau, but there's definitely no lack of good hotels with excellent facilities. This is the Venetian Macau, and it's got a massive exhibition hall. You should definitely come and check it out, because you never know if you can get a sneak peek on one of these latest products on display. This room is not only for ordinary travelers. It's designed with businessmen in mind with the latest gadgets to help speed up business transactions after long days of networking in the exhibitions. But if you're just feeling tired and overwhelmed by the interactions and activities, you can just rest in this wonderful living room that's luxuriously decorated. A suite like this will cost you 3,000 to 4,000 pitakas. Uh, it's way over my budget, but it might fit yours. So I'm just going to have to return the hotel this key. But ultimately, I think the mall takes the cake. It's bright and sunny outside. Well, actually not. This is all an illusion. We're on the third floor of the Venetian Macau shopping mall, and there's a festive season that just makes you want to spend, spend, and spend in one of these 350 shops. Surreal experience. 
This is a shopping mall and there's a river running right across it with a gondola. But what's most amazing is that the gondolier can really sing. Julieta! <laughs> every time the tradition song. Festa, che bella cosa n'hai una tra il sole, ma n'ha A handsome gondolier singing to you. It's hard to imagine that you're in Macau. The Grand Canal Shops also offer Asia's most opulent shopping experience. Surrounded by the world's finest brands, stroll along winding cobblestone walkways or unwind with a gondola ride. It's a shopper's paradise topped with the sounds of performers and singing gondoliers who recreate the romantic ambience of old world Venice. That's hands down the best part about this place. I think I just melted. <laughs> Bravo. That's it. That's it. Ci vediamo. That's yes. Benvenuta, signora Veneziano. Ciao. Ciao. It's nightfall after I finally got back on my feet. I swear my knees were turning jello after that performance. I'm ready now for a bit of pampering and glam time. Macau makes enjoyment an art form. It's got the unexpected in store and plenty of chic clubs and water lounges to unwind and sip cocktails with good company and a calming, rewarding night view. Mark trails on Kolowan and Taipa, and you can enjoy the lush green vegetation. Now, um, here's a map so we can orientate ourselves. All right, but there's no hot copy, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture of it. So if I get lost, um, this will be my lifesaver. But hang on a second, I think I have one other tip for you. I just got bitten by a mosquito. You need to bring a moggy spray. It's also worth exploring the parks on the island. And if you miss the sun and surf, the beach is not too far off. Located here on Kolowan Island, the Black Beach or Haksa is lapped by the warm safe waters of the Pearl River Delta. Ideal for swimming. Wow, it's really gorgeous. That's Black Beach over there. And it's really interesting. You can see the sand is really dark. Lots of families love it here and children like to swim because it's really safe. And I heard there's another beach called Cheongwan round the corner. To get here, catch the public bus number 25 or 21A. You can also climb up to the top of the hill for a perfect photo opportunity. And if you want to soak up pure, unadulterated fun in the sun, sand and sea, you found your place here. It's good to know that you can basically switch gear any time you need to get out from the bright city lights. Macau is a vibrant city with a truly unique Portuguese-Chinese culture. Its Mediterranean European architecture designs also have an unmissable oriental touch. Its historical status as an outpost of European settlement and flourishing business have given it a special place in China. I fully enjoyed my week's stay here in Macau. This city is packed with endless pleasant surprises. 
Its colorful history, heritage sites, yummy-licious cuisines have captivated my imagination. But most importantly, the warm, hospitable people I've met along the way have filled my time with absolute pleasure. I can't believe this pace of life is part of Macau. I mean, the city is just so full of life and packed with action and fast. But you know, if you really want to check out, you can just leave your worries behind and come to this. And Macau is just like a diamond with so many different facets and. If you look hard enough, you'll be able to find one that you enjoy. And for me, I'm a nature lover. This is her most shining moment. I'm Greta Georges, and this has been Travel Log.